Hey everybody, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to a very special episode of CSK News. Now I do ramble on a lot in this episode. Please pay attention guys and leave a comment down below whether you want me to do these longer videos or not. My last three videos have been way too long, so leave a comment down below if you guys like me rambling on and going on to greater detail or not. I want you guys to know I'll be watching all your guys' feedback. As always, let's get right into it. And first off today guys, in shocking CSK News, we have the announcement of GB James, or I guess I should stop, probably stop calling him GB James. I'll get into that story in a second guys. He has now become the new Detroit Renegades, formerly LA Renegades. As many of you guys know, they rebranded the this past week into the Detroit Renegades. He is now their newly announced co-owner. Now this comes as a big shock to all of us because as many of you guys knew early last week, it was originally just Jonas Jerebko, the NBA star for the Boston Celtics who had bought out the whole Renegades organization, also picked up a Call of Duty team as well as, you know, kind of rebranding this whole organization as a whole as well. But now it seems at least one of his buying out partners apparently is James O'Connor, formerly GB James. Now why I keep on calling him GB James is his former Twitter when he was actually a coach for Liquid and, and you know, previously his whole entire Twitter, his handle was GB James. That Twitter has been deleted, and he has now revamped himself into his own name, his actual real life name, as he goes by James O'Connor. Now, I'm also really curious to see what he has to offer this team besides being just a co-owner role. As many of you guys also see, we don't see too many own owners. You know, we have uh, Lars Christensen, who's invested in, into Trick Esports, the Danish organization, or Jonas Derebko. If you guys look at their profile pictures, they're not dressing up in their Twitter banners in their actual team's jerseys. So I really would not be shocked to see at all if James O'Connor actually plays a coaching role for this new Renegades team. As many of you guys know, kind of funny as well when he played for Liquid, that former Liquid coach, a short stint there. They then went on to go have Trip also coach for them. But when he was coaching for Liquid, he was not really a spectacle of a coach. And obviously that stint did not last for him. He remained tied to them for a short time. They also had a short, very, very short stint with also Trip. I believe was another coach there. And of course they've landed on Peacemaker now, who's been working decently for them as well. Probably better than of course than James O'Connor did. So gonna be really curious to see if he couldn't really offer a coaching role to Liquid, how he actually got picked up at Renegades here. Was he strictly a buyout partner or could he offer something else when they actually offered him a co-owner role. Did he say, hey, I can also coach your team. I want to be a co-owner as well. And next up, guys, we do have a story on Mortal Kombat, the Bulgarian team, arguably the best Bulgarian team we've ever seen so far, especially this last month or so, as they've seen the recent success. As many of you guys know, at the premiere of the ESA Global Challenge just last weekend or a couple weekends ago, where they beat out teams like Ents, Echo Fox, and also the Swedish team Crown Esports, who just rebranded under that Crown Esports organization. We actually had a story about this just a couple days ago on CSK News, but a team that's been bouncing from org to org, especially these past six months or so, is Mortal Kombat. They were first with EFRAG for a decent amount of time there. Then their most recent stint was with the organization known as Orbit. They were only with them for a couple of weeks, but I believe, and they've really been bouncing it back and forth between orgs ever since. And they've actually rebranded themselves as Mortal Kombat. In between EFRAG and Orbit, they were known as Mortal Kombat and have since gone back to that name, as many of you guys know. Now, it's no secret as well, this team's been playing for quite some time with a, a former stand-in player and also a permanent roster member, as many of you guys know him by the name of Dreamer, who received a VAC ban over two years ago in October of 2014. And it's really been no secret. He's been a permanent member of this roster for quite some time under EFRAG, under Orbit. He's also been stood in for a few times, but still has mainly been a part of this permanent roster. Now, again, if you didn't catch that, his name is Dreamer. Now, he actually came forward a couple months after this. Was Again, this is two years ago, uh, over two years ago in October 2014. We had several months later, he actually came forward with HLTV in an interview in January of 2015, stating why he actually, you know, his excuse as to why this was not his actual VAC ban. He went on to say that his ESCA account, which received the VAC ban, was stolen and then it received the VAC ban. He actually showed proof of himself not being able to access the account, so on and so forth. And even though he showed this proof to HLTV, a large portion of the community still thought he was very guilty and rightly accused of receiving his VAC ban for his ESEA account. So now, all of a sudden, fast forward, you know, a little over two years or a little under two years, a few people were very upset, especially this past weekend, within the last week or so, with the reasoning behind Mortal Kombat and their ability to participate in any event whatsoever with an alleged cheater on their roster and on their team, especially when you have players, you know, a short list to think of right now is you have Emilio or SF or Kukli and I probably messed up his pronunciation so bad but they're simply not allowed in any CSGO tournaments whatsoever and now we can argue that players who are VAC banned can't participate in Valve only sponsored events which means if ESL also partnered with ESCA doesn't want to align themselves with Valve sponsored events or Valve's alignment they can play whoever they want to so for the argument on that kind of side guys they really can participate they can have anyone participate in their events as long as they they say so it's under ESL's guidelines they don't have to align themselves with Valve's rules, especially when someone is VAC banned and they say only with Valve sponsored events can they not participate. So ESL can really do whatever they want with their type of events. Now we're really unsure as a community right now what the repercussions for this are. We've had this said before, especially the new coaching rules that came out not too long ago. You know, at the end of that article, they said they must align. If you want to, you know, align with Valve sponsored events, you must follow these coaching rule changes. But there's really no specific list out there of repercussions that ESL or Starladder or, or FPL or whatever it may be 
whatever event host, um, DreamHack, whoever does not align with these, there's really no repercussions as of right now that we know of if they don't align themselves with Valve sponsored events. Now, of course, Valve has the IP, they own the game, they have the right to shut down that game and that tournament if they don't align themselves, but who's really to say they actually would do that? Now, if we actually bend this rule even farther, obviously they're allowing some backband players, such as Dreamer, who again, he might have been falsely accused, we're not really sure about that, but if they're allowing him to play and not SF, Emilio, Kukli, whoever it may be, what if they bend the rule even farther? Now, let's let's take into account other types of bands besides VAC bands. Let's let's take into account the X I by Power team. Who's to say that in the future now we won't have ESL, you know, possibly having those guys come back and play because Valve's not going to stop them from playing. They're, if Valve's not going to step in and intervene with you guys having VAC band players, who's to say Valve's going to step in and stop you from playing with I by Power players? Now, again, this is such a broad rule booked area, especially with ESL. If you guys know in the past as well, when we go back to the Winter Fox and the Luminosity Gaming, when it came to ESL Pro League and whether the team kept their spot or the organization kept their spot when they were moving in between rosters. As many of you guys know, LG bought out the win-out roster when they moved on from their lineup. They got to keep their spot with that organization. And then we also had Winter Fox change out their entire lineup, and that organization also kept their spot for ESL Pro League. So again, ESL, a very broad rule book here in terms of repercussions for if you guys don't line up to ESL to a Valve sponsored event rules, what the repercussions there are, and also a bit very broad rule book when it comes to who can we play with? Can we play with Vacman players? Can we participate with these kind of guys? Can we play with the I by Power guys? Who is the actual certified rulebook here? I really don't think many people in the community know right now who's actually in control of all of this. And for any of you guys who weren't able to watch the Northern Arena Championships this past weekend, you were in for a little bit of surprise because it was a crazy weekend full of a little bit of controversy. But first off, guys, in the semifinals for this Northern Arena Championships that occurred this last weekend, it was Cloud9 who took down Heroic. As many of you guys know, that former Team X who rebranded themselves, that Team Heroic still showed up, played very well, a close series there for at least one game. Then Cloud9 kind of blew them out those last two games to sweep them 2-1 in that series. Now also, it was Immortals who took down Echo Fox in the semifinals to make it a Cloud9 Immortal final. And here's where it gets kind of funny because actually last weekend, these two also met up in the Cyber Power PC tournament and it was Cloud9 who dominated these guys and swept them 2-0 in their best of three series just last weekend. And now we have one weekend later here in the Northern Arena Championships and the tides had definitely turned. Now it was a close series, don't get me wrong, several very close games and it did go to game three, but it was Immortals who took that game three and the Northern Arena title with a $50,000 prize pool. Now if you guys did not notice, there were a lot of Cloud9 mistakes, a lot of people saying, especially post plant wise, not only Cloud9 and their actual member, nothing and many of their players noticed this, but also people, if you guys watch Northern Arena Championships, a lot of viewers and Cloud9 fans say, and stating the obvious here that Cloud9, this whole best of three series could have gone a completely different way, but that's not the real controversy here. As many of you guys know, Immortals did win, but it was kind of a skeptical way. So here's what actually happened. It was game three on overpass. They were three rounds in. It was actually the start of round three. Cloud9 was already down to nothing when apparently Cloud9 nothing had somehow noticed that a player for Immortals known as Henny had actually not had his headset on. Now, if you guys don't know, for pretty much any event, it's standard rules. It's always in the rule book generally for most events, no matter if it's a major or tournament, that you have to have not only the designated earbuds in your ears, but also the headpieces on as well. So not only the earbuds, but also the head uh, the headgear as well. You have to have that on. It's a certified rule because when you have casters, you're, in, you're not in a closed booth. When you're in an open booth, you can sometimes hear the casters live casting the game, which could could be considered a very, you know, a very skeptical thing if Immortals were using this as a method of cheating. Now, apparently Henny had his headset off, Cloud9 nothing noticed this, they alerted and it came to a technical pause. Now, here's what happened. Apparently, we had different forms, different parties saying different things here, but apparently what happened is admins actually offered Cloud9 the chance to reset. Cloud9 nothing being their captain, he actually said no, we'll play on the rounds they won fair and square. So they resumed the game, they restarted round three, and they resumed the game with Cloud9 losing to nothing. Cloud9 went on to lose, but again, a really big controversy here. As in the past, we've had players on former Temple Storm and now on Immortals. We actually had Phelps in the past with this image. They've been known to not play with headsets. We also had Fallen, another Brazilian player, not play with a headset for a majority of MLG Columbus not too long ago. It's been a very big controversy, not only in the Brazilian scene with a lot of pro players, I'm not trying to target Brazilians, but it, it kind of aligns itself with a lot of past events where these Brazilian players have considered themselves, you know, able to bend the rules because, uh, as Fallen said, they don't speak English, so it really doesn't matter if they have their headsets off, if they can hear the casters. Now, it comes down to this, guys. The rulebook clearly states you have to have the designated headset apparel on at all times when you're on the game, when you're at the gaming station, when you're playing the game. So, although I don't think it affected the game, I think the best team did win here. That was a little bit of controversy right there. So, yes, Northern Rear Championships have ended. Cloud9, their reign of success has ended somewhat temporarily. They hopefully will be back sometime soon with ESL New York. We'll have to wait and see what happens. I don't think anything's going to get revoked here. Now, a big problem as well was 
in their rule book, they never had a consequence for this. So a lot of people were confused as to what was going to happen. The admins didn't know how to handle the situation because in their rule book, they clearly stated you have to have the headset on, the, the gear on at all times, but there was no consequence if a team did not follow that rule. So that was the main issue there. I am rambling so much today. And then some weird CS news for all of you guys. We have had our, in our past on CSGO News, we've had our youngest pro player with TSM Twist at 16 years of age when we first announced him. We also had our youngest FPL player of all time, which is a 14 year old David Cernansky, also known as Frozen in game. And again, here on CSGO News, we make history guys with a unique story here of the youngest ever official CSGO caster. And that's a 14 year old who goes by the name of ES Merrick in game. But for now, we'll call him Earl Stevenson. That's his real name. Who again, he's just 14 years of age. He actually comes from Britain and is a part of a, a gaming, I guess, a semi-organization known as Arab Esports. Now, they do have a small following. If you guys want proof, he's actually had casters and analysts such as Sadokiss stand on his casting skills, so he's actually pretty good. So if you guys want to hear him, here's a quick preview of our youngest ever caster in CSGO. Angle, and Dupree's just going to get completely cornered off by Apex and all those flashes, but Device is waiting on the other side of the smoke. He's picked up an AK now, so he will, he's just anticipating more players to run through, but... It's not going to pay off, and Carrigan's not seeing much action, but he's being patient as Kenny's going to try challenging, and he goes down, maybe getting Elsie for the AWP, but Happy's going to be pushing Raps, sees Kierby, and he's going to get tagged very low by Kierby, and MBK pushing into Garage, and nice shot from Device, but there's one more player, that's Devil, but Devil takes down Device. Okay, I need to be completely honest with all of you guys. I've been super stressed out. I've been looking at these stories a lot more, and I feel like I'm expressing almost too much of my opinion. Now, I'm not really sure, you know, when it comes to that Brazilian story that I just talked about, Cloud9 Immortals, I felt really good kind of rambling about all that stuff. Those are the last stories for today. Now, I really want to talk to all of you guys. It's very important you listen here. I want you all to leave comments down below and say one of two things. No, Jake, keep the short stories, keep them short, keep them brief. I want to be a quickly debriefed or say, no, Jake, I like when you ramble on. I like when you go into detail. I like the longer stories because my last three videos have now been over 10 minutes long and they've only covered four or five stories. And that makes me feel guilty because the main reason why you guys are supposed to be watching CSGO News is generally for short stories, all compacted to a five or six minute video. And my last three videos have been so long. So let me know down in the comments, guys. Do you want me to elaborate like I have in this video and the past videos? It feels good to get that stuff off my chest, but I feel like to some extent, I'm listing off a little too much information and sometimes I ramble off topic so please your comments do matter in this video a lot let me know down below guys as always I will see you all tomorrow hopefully my first ever esports news video I'm trying to work on that gathering stories for all of you guys and all of esports it's a very stressful thing to do it's very hard to gather all these stories at once and somewhat on time so hopefully that first episode will be released tomorrow as well as another CSGO news video or an exposed video coming soon hope you guys all enjoy live love laugh a lot I'll see you all tomorrow remember I like you